Hi, if you are a student preparing for physics exam and struggling to solve dynamics question, you must not miss out this video. In fact, in this video, we are going to look at a few most common misconceptions that students have and from there, I'm going to show you how all the dynamics concepts are related to Newton's laws. When you can grasp this simple overview, you will find that you can solve dynamics questions very easily. First, let's look at objects at rest. We have here a book resting on the table. Are there forces acting on the book? Since the book is not moving, many people think that there are no forces acting on the book. However, this is not correct. In our previous lesson, when we learned the four types of forces, we have learned that every object on Earth will experience a downward gravity pull by the Earth, and that is its weight. Then, because the book is touching the table, there is also a contact force acted on the book. These two forces are balanced. There is no resultant force. Hence, the book is at rest, not moving. Let me give you a clearer illustration of balanced forces. We have two persons pulling an object. Both exert an equal force of 500 Newton, but in opposite direction. Because the two forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction, the resultant force is zero. We say the forces are balanced and the object is in equilibrium, at rest, not moving. So when forces are balanced, it is a case of Newton's first law of motion that states that when the object is at rest, it will remain at rest. Second question, does balance forces apply only to objects at rest? No. We have a car moving with uniform velocity. Acceleration equals zero. If the car is moving, does it mean that the forces are not balanced? Now let's look at the horizontal forces acting on the car. The force from its engine, the forward thrust, moves it towards the right. As it moves, the car experiences resistive forces both from the air resistance and the frictional force between the tyres and the road. If the forward thrust is greater than the resistive forces, the car will accelerate. If the resistive forces are greater than its forward thrust, then the car will decelerate. If the forward thrust equals the resistive forces, the acceleration will be zero. Zero acceleration does not mean the velocity is zero. It means the velocity is constant. In other words, when these forces are balanced, the car continues to move with constant velocity. Hence, when forces are balanced, there is zero resultant force, the object can either be at rest or having a constant velocity. So this is why Newton's first law of motion states that when an object is at rest or in uniform motion, it will continue in its state of rest or uniform motion respectively unless a resultant force acts on it. So, can you see that Newton's first law is all about balanced forces? In fact, Newton's first law applies when the forces are balanced, and Newton's second law applies when the forces are not balanced. When forces are not balanced, that is, when there is a resultant force, the object will move towards the direction of the resultant force. And according to Newton's second law, it will move with an acceleration governed by the formula resultant force equals to mass times acceleration. So when a person pushes the trolley, when the forward force is greater than its resistive force, then there is a resultant force of F1 minus F2. The trolley will not move at constant velocity, but will move with an acceleration as according to Newton's second law of motion, which states that the resultant force is equal to its mass times its acceleration. Hence, we can equate F1 minus F2 to be equals to Ma. So take note of this very important equation because many of the dynamics questions are solved using this equation. Having understood Newton's first and second laws, let's clarify another misconception relating to objects falling at terminal velocity. In this picture, a boy kicks a ball down a high cliff. We know that objects falling in the presence of air will reach terminal velocity because the upward air resistance equals its downward weight. 
So does it mean that if this ball were to reach its terminal velocity before it touches the ground, the ball will not continue to fall to the ground but will float in air? The answer is no. When the ball reaches terminal velocity, it is a case when the forces are balanced. That is, the downward weight equals the upward air resistance. So there is no resultant force. When there is no resultant force, there is no acceleration. That is, the velocity is not increasing. Although the velocity is not increasing, it is not zero. The ball is still falling at a constant velocity. This is a case of Newton's first law where forces are balanced. If you like this video, visit my website for more physics lessons and try out the self-assessment questions to reinforce your understanding. And remember to subscribe to my channel or share it with a friend.